What's happening, beautiful people out there in YouTube world? Back from Egypt, on the ground, breaking tracks, figuring it out. If, uh, if you've got a mind and you want to get your mind blown, that is the place to go. Like, holy moly, like, oh my God. I'll tell you, I went over there and had a sophisticated vocabulary, sputter out, a, you know, three, four, six, seven syllable words. And by the time I left, I was just going, wow. I mean, the absolute enormity. I did 20 temples in uh, oh, yeah, 10 days, you know, and I uh, got back about a month ago. So uh, just, just decompressing, got a lot of uh, theories, a lot of ideas. A lot of downloads came in when I was over there. It's like going home, you know, coming back home again. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful country. You ever get a chance to get over there? People are nice, uh, food's beautiful, great, uh, fresh food. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the temples, uh, the, the pyramids, the, the whole ball of wax, just absolutely insane. Just amazing, just absolutely amazing. So uh, here we go. We're gonna. We're going to start off at Aswan. It was the last temple I went to. Took a cruise down uh, in flight in Egypt, uh, plane from uh, Cairo down to Aswan, about 450 miles. And then, uh, you know, hit a few places. Uh, Isis Temple on the, uh, <clears throat> you know, Nile. And, and we did uh, did a few, uh, you know, stayed on Elephantine Island and uh, we're, we're everywhere. That's, but I'm down here at the Unfinished Obelisk. Aswan, Egypt, unfinished obelisk purpose. What's it all about? Is it the obelisk or a needle, a, a, a needle stuttering here, pointing out the sun's declination and the Earth's ice age tilt, tilt. The obelisk is pointing 70 degrees northeast. The sun's azimuth angle on the summer solstice is 64 degrees in Aswan, Egypt currently. Um, so the unfinished obelisk pointing 70 degrees is an obvious record indicating the Earth's tilt during the time of the making of the unfinished obelisk and the obvious ice age tilt of the Earth where glaciers are growing and not melting. Point being a six degree change in the azimuth is enough to send the planet into an ice age. Also, I'm going to be doing a little explanation on how stone was cut in ancient Egypt. Certain places. All right, so big deal is, big thing is that the sun is rising seven degrees closer to the, uh, you know, south of the, uh, <clears throat> further south, put it that way. I mean, it's the northern latitude, obviously, it'd be in the southern latitude too, so. I'm uh, going 23 and a half, uh, the tilt right now. I'm not, I don't think it, it equates equally, but it's definitely um, a significant change and where the sun rises, if it doesn't come up higher, you know, you're going to get cooler up north. I mean, you know, we're in seasons now. So we'll get into this a little bit. Uh, this picture was taken of one of the first uh, cool cats that discovered it. And it was, uh, I think it's 1904. It's always good. When you're doing research, try to get the oldest pictures you can possibly get. Because so much stuff around this planet has been screwed with. It's impossible to do any de uh, decent archaeology from my standpoint, you know, or, or uh, research or investigation because you, you're constantly getting, going down these rabbit holes that, that are absolutely uh, a waste of time and meaningless. That all being said, um, the composite of average granite, mica, K felspar, plagial case, and uh, quartz. Here I am at the uh, at the obelisk, Aswan, Aswan Quarry, sitting right there, and uh, it's like it's like 85 degrees. I just came from Massachusetts. It's like you know zero here, so I was like I was overheating and uh, you know on the uh, verge of heat stroke. We'll put it that way because it was such a big change in temperatures for me. Uh, but anyways, I survived it. Got some water. And uh, here I am, still muttering off what's going on. Now, this is it going, this is a 70 degrees I'm talking about, right? And right now, if, if this was turned like six degrees this way, that would be putting at where the sun's highest, um, Azimuth, which is the uh, northern summer solstice, Azimuth, uh, 
angle coming up. That's basically the angle of the sun rising up out of the, out of the ocean, out of, out of the horizon. <clears throat> um, so my theory is this thing was never meant to come out of the ground. It's a, it's an it's a piece of instrumentation pointing at where the sun was rising when it was built and during the ice age. Um, it's, it's like one, uh, 1,000 tons, um, you know, uh, you know uh, it's a hundred some odd feet long. And, uh, I was going to say it's, it's like, it's massive. Now when they, when they, when they built this thing, the cracks were already visible. It wasn't like, Oh my God, it cracked. It was already cracked when they made it. They didn't make this thing to move it. The largest uh, obelisk, I think, in Egypt that came from here was only 300 tons, you know, and only 300. But, so this is like well over uh, three times that. Now, I'm not saying they couldn't have moved it and couldn't have done whatever they were doing back there. They had their game on. So uh, <clears throat> it's just my theory. You know, I'm just thinking, you know, just thinking common sense. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense any, either way you put it at. And, and the, and the, uh, you know, the, the position that it is, is beyond, um, you know, just, just like mere, okay, it's not, it's not coincidental. Everything they, everything the ancient Egyptians did was, it was for a reason, as you will soon find out. It was like a, uh, a visual of it from an aerial view. Um, this is the angle that I'm talking about right now. The sun's coming up at 64 degrees on the azimuth, and uh, azimuth, and uh, right now this is pointed 70 degrees. Like I said, six degrees difference, which would be ice building mode. This kind of gives you more of a explanation of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> the uh, the azimuth is a measurement of clockwise um, degrees going, you know, from north, which is zero. And in and, and this particular case, we're going, uh, the next stop is uh, east, right, on the, on the compass. So we're at 64 here right now. And that's the, uh, the uh, elevation and the uh, zenith angle, which is, I don't think plays into it. It's possible that it does. But, you know, for right now, <clears throat> we'll just roll with that. Um, here we go. We've got some drilled holes here. I, again, I think those were uh, put in place, uh, you know, in our current era, not not back when these things were being built. And I will uh, I will expand on that explanation. You see all these like uh, square divots. I'm gonna get into the explanation. Now we're shifted into how stone was cut <coughs> in uh, in Egypt. There, um, I took a picture of this right here. I think I met uh, Jean Pierre. Houdin up there also like I didn't know until like later on that night, you know, and I, I said I think that was you know He's dressed in black and then a uh, uh, healthy looking guy. So uh, Hey, maybe it was well if it was God bless you, man <laughs> Anyways, uh, these are like square holes like the way we the way we crack stone today and, and uh, break them in half is we drill holes and um, you know, put put a what they call a feather and dowels in and split the rock, which I'll show you in a few minutes. But I took these pictures here, just amazing. They're all, you know, kind of curved out. And um, a little bit more of a, a nice picture there. There's a Chinese guy I was talking to. He was really, he was like just blown away like I was about the whole thing. It's a bad picture, but there's uh, holes drilled and there's a feather. They call it a feather in a, a dowel system when you, you put the feather in. Put the dowel in and you smash it with a, um, a rock, uh, or a hammer rather, four or five pound hammer, or even bigger. <clears throat> I'll show you some better pictures. Now, this is the thing cracked, right? Now you'll see the, you see the striations in the rock. They're similar to the striations in um, here, you know, which I'll show you a little bit more. But, I mean, you see, you see where the dowels went in, the feathers in the dowels went in, and they smashed it. But you see these white, there's these white grooves that come down the dock in the middle. It's almost uh, exactly, uh, this kind of like off topic. It, it, well, let me go back. It's, it's, it looks exactly like the uh, striations that you see up there on the uh, obelisk in, um, in Aswan. Let me see if we can get the, the obelisk. See the, see the pictures here? <clears throat> see the striations here? 
you know, so they were coming in. They weren't using uh, dowels. I'll show you what they were using. It's like a wedge almost, but um, yeah, you can see a little bit. Well, you can see that there on the side there. I think I got a couple other pictures. You can see it. You can see it on the side. This is the obelisk here, but you can see the straight lines coming down. <coughs> All right, getting back to getting back up and on top. Now diamonds were around in India 3 BC. Okay, diamonds are plentiful on the planet. You got the psychopath De Beers mines. They they always you know they grabbed they bought every mine on the planet. They created a shortage, artificially ramped up the the price of it. But diamonds were used back in the day to cut stone in Egypt. Okay, with their uh, tube drills. Saws like you can make saws. We had, I mean, they had bronze technology there. So if you got like a lot of crushed up diamonds, you, you crush it all up, you turn it into powder, you mix it in with your bronze, you're staring it around, you pour it in a, um, a mold, you got yourself a stone blade with diamonds in it. Okay, it's, I mean, just going back and forth with the diamond blade, be cutting through the stuff like it's nothing. Also, the tube drills, yeah, I mean, granted, you can make the tube drills with uh. With bronze, again, just mix the diamonds into the mix, pour it into a mold. You got you got the technology you have today. We're not talking we're not talking rocket science here. Just saying that's that's a possibility. All right, I don't want to poo-poo the uh, you know any of the uh, work that everybody's been doing talking about. Uh, they they were honing out uh, stone vessels. They were doing some amazing work. So we can't say that uh, you know it was all the aliens. You know. <laughs> Which, by the way, we are the aliens. All right, this is what they were doing. You know, it's harder for us today to make these rectangular slots in the stone. But th what they were doing in Aswan is they're making these rectangular slots. Instead of making these round uh, and putting a round dowel in with the drill holes, they were putting square uh, wedges in. And they were banging them, right, and splitting the stone. Again, you can see the divots here. You can see a couple of uh, these square um, a rectangular slot in the in the obelisk. A couple of guys, uh, a dude out there checking it out, going, "He's like me, wow!" Right? You come down with these uh, with these wedges. You keep going, but once you get down to the bottom, it's going to curve naturally because you're at the bottom of the uh, the ledge, you know. So if you're coming down, it's just going to curve naturally and pop out. <clears throat> and we're scooping it out like ice cream. Um, also, there was water technology. So most of these places they have. The, these, uh, you know, these excavated places around, they always had a big well, all right? So if they were using water, high pressure water, you know, they could, they could uh, you know, pump it out, clean the place off, and uh, cut stone with water. But again, you see the striations coming down, just like I showed you in that stone that was, was split just with feathers and uh, dowels. Here's the holes right over here. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it's on the corner of the screen. Like I said, I believe that was done recently. Like right here, there's the holes right there. It looks like somebody was gonna, you know, cleave off a piece of granite until somebody with half a brain said, hey, don't do that. This thing's part of a big giant obelisk, you know? What the fobelisk is going on, right? All right, these are the uh, dowels. I should have put them up first. These are two feathers on the side and a tapered, um, you know, chisel, dowel, whatever you want to call it. Goes in, boom, splits it. What they were doing with those rectangular uh, holes that they were making was they were, they were, they were using some kind of a square, longer uh, wedge and splitting the, uh, splitting the, uh, the granite and giving you those, those perfect striations coming down like that stone that I, that I showed popped up really. Uh, this is at the Giza Plateau. Um, you can see there was obviously some cutting going on. Some, you know, the, the horizontal ones are really tough. And you'll see these, these lines right here go right through um, the, uh, the back walls here. I was walking, I was actually walking across this stuff going, what is all this stuff, right? I mean, this, obviously they, they were harvesting the stones out of the bedrock to possibly build the pyramids with. Now this is today's technology. Notice it's almost identical to the lines I just showed you in the, uh, out there at the Giza Plateau, all right? So just imagine this wall here is, is being sliced. It was already sliced horizontally. 
uh, vertically rather, and now they're slicing it horizontally. Okay? And, um, you know, that's it. I mean, it's like 60, 90,000 psi of water. Okay? Just sliced it up. Um, again, I think they had, obviously, they had the technology we have today because they were us and we are them. All right? No aliens. Okay? No aliens. Take your antennas, put them back in your head. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like, uh, th this is it. I mean, this is just, you know, this is sliced with water. Um, and these holes, these holes are the actual water jets slicing through the stone and just bouncing off and just gouging out holes, okay, on these slots. You see how they, they line up, okay? They're just, it's just the water jets on that wall I showed you earlier, right here. Right here. I mean, this this thing's going in at 100,000 psi. It's cutting through the stone it wants to, but it's blasting right straight through into the uh, into the uh, next layer of bread bedrock that has that will be harvest later, which in this particular point never was. Uh, let's see if we can't get this video going just for you. This 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 will rock your world right here if we can get this in there. <clears throat> Hopefully, I can get back out of here. My God, I probably won't be able. To. Should be able to we'll see if we can't get this video started. High pressure water jet quarry equipment provides a safe and incident free working environment. Precision cutting ensures a cost effective alternative to blasting. There you go. So you saw it there. You can check out the video later. Um, this is the explanation. <laughs> It's not it. It's definitely not it. All right? It's not it, man. All right, here's a couple of my websites. If you want to follow my work? I'm back on. I've got a lot of ideas coming. I'm going to be tipping over the whole uh, apple cart. If you can, give me a like. Give me a shout out. Share this stuff. It's your planet, too. We've got to stop doing stupid people. We ain't got a lot of time left. All right, man. Um, uh, yeah, let's uh, yeah, share it, like it. If you can, hate it, whatever, uh, throw some comments out there. And don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe.